Hello and welcome to another test automation series. This time we will be learning about Cypress.io. Now I'm sure most of you guys have already heard about Cypress as it's becoming one of the most popular end-to-end -end testing tool out there. And more and more Cypress related jobs are getting created due to its popularity. So if you haven't heard about Cypress, don't worry, we will be covering everything you need to know about Cypress in this tutorial series. Now let's talk about what we will be covering in this series. So I've broken this series in four parts. We have our introduction, the setup, commands, and some advanced Cypress concepts. So first off, in our introduction, we will talk about what is Cypress.io, how it works. Here we will talk about what tools does Cypress use, how it is different than any other frameworks. Then we will go over Cypress features. And then at the end, we'll talk about the advantages and trade-offs of using Cypress. So at the end of this section, you will have enough knowledge about Cypress from a high-level perspective and you would know whether Cypress is the right fit for you or not. After the introduction, we will begin setting up Cypress locally. We will also run some pre-built tests and then get an overview of the Cypress test runner. Once we have Cypress set up, we will write our first test in Cypress. We will understand basic Cypress syntax, run our test, look into the hot reload functionality, and also discuss how we can see logs in developer console. Moving on to our next section, we will go over the commonly used Cypress commands. So we will look into how assertion works in Cypress. We will look into how to deal with multiple elements as well as how to deal with various form inputs in Cypress. And by the end of this section, you will have enough knowledge to start creating your own Cypress test for your website. Then moving on to our final section, we will go over some advanced concepts such as page object model, talk about what it is, how to implement it with Cypress, and also talk about why Cypress team suggests not to use page object model and instead what you should use. Then we will go over other topics such as how to handle weights, how to create custom commands, how to run your test using Cypress CLI, how cross browser testing works with Cypress, and then at the end, how you can generate reports with Cypress. So there you go, we will be covering quite a bit in this tutorial series, and all of this will provide you with solid understanding about Cypress. I hope you guys are excited about learning Cypress with me. Now let's dive into some details and talk about what is Cypress. Cypress is a JavaScript all-in-one end-to-end testing framework. So what does that mean? Well, unlike many other frameworks, Cypress comes with all the features inbuilt for you to start doing browser automation. So basically, you just need to run one command to install Cypress. And once that is installed, you will have access to a testing framework, assertion library, as well as mocking and stubbing included. As you can see in the picture here, before Cypress, you had to choose which framework to use from the popular ones like Mocha, Jasmine, Karma, etc. As well as pick the assertion libraries such as Chai or ExpectJS. And then you will need to install like Selenium and choose a wrapper on top of Selenium such as Protector or WebDriver. And then also had to install additional libraries for mocking and stubbing. But then Cypress came along and said, don't worry about all of that. I will give you all the tools you need for you to start writing your test ASAP. So let's talk about what are those tools that Cypress provides us. So Cypress uses mainly three top libraries, Mocha for the BDD testing framework, Chai as the assertion library, and Synon.js for mocking and stubbing purposes. So Cypress rely on these popular open source testing libraries to ensure you get stable and familiar experience when working with Cypress. Now, if you have dabbled in JavaScript testing world before, you are probably familiar with these libraries. Other than these, Cypress also use other popular libraries such as jQuery, Chai jQuery, Sanon Chai, and few more which you can find in the Cypress docs. All right, so you have been hearing about all the buzz around Cypress, but let's go over what is actually so different about it and why everyone loves it so much. So one of the key thing is that it does not use Selenium, unlike majority of the testing frameworks out there. So unlike Selenium, which execute remote commands through the network to control your browser, Cypress runs in the same loop as your application. So Cypress is running within your browser just the way you're running your application. And because of that, a lot of flakiness and instability that you might have encountered when using Selenium, Cypress promises to handle that in a lot more efficient manner. And the next difference is that unlike Selenium, you can only write Cypress tests in JavaScript. So if you want to use Cypress, you need to know how to use JavaScript. And at least at this moment, they don't have any way to write tests in any other language. And the next one that you've probably heard is that it's dev and QA friendly. So what that means is with Cypress, your devs can do TDD for end-to-end -end testing. As weird as that sounds, it is possible to do that with Cypress. 
The reason for that is because test runs extremely fast and as you write your Cypress test, the changes are reflected in real time. So it's easy for the developer to write a Cypress test, see it fail and then code the app to get it green. And obviously the QS can write the test too. The syntax is really easy to pick up where anyone can come in and start writing tests in Cypress. And the last one we already talked about that Cypress is built for end to end testing experience. So it does not get into unit testing or any other general automation testing and simply focuses on automating your web application end to end. And it does that quite well. It also comes along with all the tools you need to start writing your test instead of you installing 10 different libraries. Now let's get into a little bit more detail and look into some of the features provided by Cypress. So hands down one of the best feature about Cypress is its test runner. It provides a whole new experience to end to end testing. Now the test runner itself provides great features such as time travel through all of the commands, debugging your application, real time reload and some other great features. Now another great feature which we talked about already is setting up tests are extremely easy with Cypress. All you have to do is just install Cypress and then everything gets set up for you. And the next one is the automatic weights. So you will barely have to use weights when using Cypress. So Cypress has its automatic weight functionality where it's waiting for each and every one of your command. And the last but not least, you can easily stub application function behavior as well as the server responses with Cypress. So this is a really great feature to speed up your test. As you don't have to rely on existing data, instead you can just stub the data and then move along with your test. Alright, so just like everything, there are some trade-offs when using Cypress. And it's important for you to know before you start using it. The first one that gets discussed a lot when we talk about Cypress is its browser support. Unlike Selenium, Cypress currently has limited browser support. So if you need support for browsers such as Safari or Internet Explorer right away, then Cypress is probably not the right fit for you at this time. However, they are working on adding the browser support for these browsers. It will probably just take a little while until it's out in the market. And the next one is Cypress is a web automation framework and it runs the test in your browser. So it does not have any support for any other type of automation such as your native mobile apps or desktop apps. Another trade-offs when using Cypress is that you cannot have multiple browsers or multiple tabs open. The way its architecture is set up is that you can only use single browser and single tab. So if your app requires you to use multiple browsers or tabs, then Cypress is probably not the best tool for you at the moment. However, they do have some great guides on how you can work around with multiple browser and multiple tab issues. And the last one that I have listed over here is the same origin. So if you're not familiar with same origin, just think of this way. Let's say if you're working on cypress.io, you should just be hitting cypress.io. You cannot hit, let's say automationbro.com as that would be a different origin. Now there are some rules for this. A lot of people think that you cannot hit separate domain at all. But the way this works is you can visit two domains of a different origin in a different test, but you cannot visit two domains of different origin in the same test. So for example, for my first test, I can go in and hit cypress.io. But I cannot just in the same test go in and hit automationbro.com. What I will have to do is create another test and then hit automationbro.com. And this one might be a little bit inconvenient for you if you have a specific use case for that. But in my opinion, this is not really a big downside. Alright, I hope you now understand what Cypress is as well as some of the advantages and trade-offs of using Cypress. Now whether you decide to use Cypress at your workplace or not, I would still recommend for you guys to check out this series just to see how easy it is to get started with Cypress and the way it changes the entire testing experience. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. In the next one, we will get started with setting up Cypress on our local machine. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you guys could support my work. You can do that in few ways. The easiest is by subscribing to my channel and liking and sharing my videos. And you can also go to automationbro.com and subscribe to my mailing list to get access to all my blog posts and latest updates. And if you have the financial means, you can also support me via the Buy Me A Coffee website. All of this support will help me guys to keep making these videos for you each week and help you out in your development and testing journey. So I will add the links for everything I have mentioned in this video in the description below for you guys to check it out. That's it from my side guys. Do let me know your thoughts about Cypress in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next one.